Okay, now we're going to start looking at some of the theorems. We have corresponding angle theorem, alternate interior angle theorem, and alternate exterior angle theorems that we're going to be looking at. Um, the first one, the, the, the thing we're going to look at right now is corresponding angle theorem. So all of these can be proven or shown to be true based on that one building block of the same side interior angles postulate at the beginning. Uh, and also in using some of the things we already know, like for instance, the linear pair theorem and or the vertical angles theorem, depending on how you do it. So we're going to go ahead and prove that down below. So we will need this, this theorem. So you want to, when you're planning this proof, you want to think about what it is you already know and that you're allowed to use. You're allowed to use anything in the picture or the given, and you're already you're allowed to use your the knowledge that you already know. Um, and in this case, it's only one building block, the postulate, the same side interior angles postulate, and the theorems that I just mentioned. So these are like our tools. So we can use the same side, and I'll, I'll abbreviate it, same, SS for same side, interior angles, postulate. So that's one thing we know. We also know the linear pair theorem, and we know the vertical angles theorem. Now, just because we know it doesn't mean we have to use it, and we won't have to use all three of these here. So let's just take a look at what we what we know and where we want to go. So at the beginning, they tell us that P, now th this symbol right here looks kind of like a, an 11. Okay, that the two vertical lines like that between these two, two uh, letters, P stands for line P and Q stands for line Q, that indicates that these two lines are parallel. So that's a way of saying that Line P is parallel to line Q without having to write out the words. So we know that uh, P is parallel to Q. Now, because we have parallel lines and they are cut by a transversal, that means we're going to be able to use the, the same side interior angles postulate. Okay. Now we know what that is. That in this case, that would be measure angle four plus the measure angle three equals one. I'm sorry, not three, five. Measure angle four plus measure angle five equals 180 degrees. Or if we use three and six, measure angle three plus measure angle six equals 180. Okay, so we could use that. <clears throat> now, this isn't really part of the plan quite yet. This is just what we know. We, well, this this we're going to be starting with. We can use that. And in fact, that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use this right here, but I have to decide what am I going to use. So I'm not going to use this top one, the bottom one, angle three and six, adding to 180, or could I even use both? So let's take a look at the picture. We, we know this is true that four and six, they're supplementary, right? So we know we're going to use those, okay? We also know we have to show that angle four and angle eight are congruent. Now, if we use three and six, we want to have some way, I mean, oh, let's see, how do I say this? The four, it makes more sense to use this one because the four is, is part of what we're trying to prove. So we already, all we have to do is figure out how this four fits in with this equation and our final proof statement. So that's what we're going to be, be doing. So we're going to use that. So we know the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle five equals 180. Okay. Now, if you look at five and eight, that's pretty important because we have a five here. Okay, right? So we need that five also because it's related to the eight. Now look at five and eight. How do they how are they related? If we look at our tools, five and eight. Okay. 
they form a linear pair, don't they? Which says that angle 5 plus measure angle 5 plus measure angle 8 has to equal 180. Okay, so note, you should notice a few things. One, we have 180, 180. We have that twice. We also have an overlap in this case as well. Measure of angle 5 is the same as the measure of angle 5 here. So just like we did in that previous proof, we can set this up and get rid of this. <clears throat> we want to replace this with this part. So we're going to say the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 5 equals measure of angle 5 plus the measure of angle 8. So again, and I, I guess I'm getting out of the picture a little bit. Measure angle 5, measure angle 5. If we can get rid of that, it might be a little easier to see. And so that's what we're going to do. Negative, um, negative uh, positive uh, measure angle 5 minus negative angle 5. Okay, that's going to cancel out. We're using the inverse operations. The inverse uh, of each other is measure angle 5 is positive. We put that together with negative measure angle 5. We end up getting 0. Measure angle 4 equals measure angle 8. Okay, that's going to be our final answer up here. Okay, so that's the that's the plan for the proof. So now what we want to do is we want to write the pair, write it out, and we're going to do this one in as a paragraph. So we're going to use the same basic plan that we did here. We're going to start off with this. Okay, so if Um, I'm sorry, line P is parallel to line Q, cut by a transversal. Okay, so that's what, that's what this is, right? Two lines cut by a transversal. These two lines are parallel. So if, if we have two lines, if we line P and Q, I should say lines, cut by a transversal, then same side interior angles are supplementary. So that means measure angle 4 plus measure angle 5 equals 180. Okay. Also, Okay, we know that angle 5, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, angle 5 and angle 8, they form a linear pair. which means they are supplementary. Okay. So, because angles four and five and angles 5 and 8 are both <clears throat> supplementary pairs. We can say measure angle 5 plus measure angle 8 equals measure angle 4 plus measure 
angle 5. Okay. And then the last statement, when we did that over here, we just subtracted. This was the subtraction property of equality. Okay? So that's what we say. Using the subtraction <coughs> property of equality, we can see that measure angle four equals measure angle eight. Now, using that, we can go back up to our corresponding angle theorem, and we can say that what we started with was two parallel lines cut by a transversal. So we're going to start our theorem the same way as this one. If two, I'm going to just use the abbreviation or the symbol, two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. Okay. Then, so here we have the if. Now the then statement, what well, have to be true? Well, angle four and angle eight are corresponding angles. So that's the next part. Corresponding angles They must be congruent. Oh, I'm sorry. So then the same then then the corresponding angles have to be congruent. And so that would be something like this. And I, that's not very doesn't look parallel, but they are. So we have this line and this line, they're parallel. <coughs> cut by a transversal, so that would be that pair, or it could be this pair. So remember, upper left, upper left, lower right, lower right, lower left, lower left. Those are all different corresponding pairs. So these two would also be congruent, okay, etc. And I could keep marking, so this one would match up with this one. There you have it.